intro. Hmm? Let's just have an intro. Introduction. Allahu 
Bismillah, salatu wassalam ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakum lahu khair for coming. It will be in English translated into Bosnian, inshallah. Yeah? Yeah. It's coming, inshallah. So, no worries. Stay here, inshallah. Okay? Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the team, inshallah. Again, the mosque that has arranged this wonderful possibility for me to be here. Our brother Amir, who also participated very heavily with that, right? Almir Pavankovic, as well as our community in Offenbach, where actually all the ideas started. Professor Almir, Cielo Zajednici, Islamsko Zajednici, and Jomat iz Offenbacha, where the same idea is already started. So, my name is Dr. Steph Keres. My name is Dr. Steph Keres. Steph Stefanos. Steph is from Skrajčin, from Stefan. Typical Muslim name, yeah? Typical Muslim name, for me. Right? Not Ibrahim, not Ahmed, not Ali, Stefanos. No, Ahmed, no, this name. I'm in Serbia, right? Yes, I'm in Serbia. These are the people who actually think that I'm their brother. People who think that I'm their brother. Because I was born in an Orthodox Greek family. Yes, I'm born in a Orthodox Greek family. But 1992. I was 20 years old. I was 20 years old. And after three years of an intense struggle. And after three years of an intense struggle. And after three years of an intense struggle. I used to go to a mosque. In the city where I grew up in Germany. And this mosque showed me one thing. That there is a connection between your creator and the creation. But the problem was, it was a mosque. A Greek man. A Greek man going to a mosque. Where there were Arabs and Turks, it didn't fit. It confused me. But then I found out, Alhamdulillah, that it's not about Islam, Christianity, Judaism. It is about your creator and the creation. I will never forget the very first time, one Jumu'ah, I went to this mosque and I prayed with them together. I was going, I was going up and down. I did, sorry. I did not know what I was doing, but it felt that there was something, subhanAllah. And I realized, indeed, it doesn't matter if you are Greek, Bosnian, Serbian, Italian. What counts is that you have a connection to your Lord. And that's when I decided, alhamdulillah, to make the shahada. And since that time, I've traveled a lot throughout the Muslim world. And wherever I was, I was always asked, where are you from? And always I had to say, I'm Greek, I'm Greek, I'm Greek. They didn't understand. How come a Greek Muslim, maybe your parents were Turkish? I said, no, my parents were not Turkish, they were Greek. Orthodox people, they love Greece, I love Greece, but I also love Allah, my creator. This story, every time in my 30 years of being Muslim, 30 years. 
every time wherever I was in Egypt, in Morocco, in Turkey, in Dubai, in Saudi, every time the same story. How can it be a Greek is Muslim? People cannot understand, certain people cannot understand that it is the connection that you have found, that I have found with my Lord, with my Creator. And this is extremely important. And that's why I started with this story, with my personal story. I want you to realize that if I ask you, every time in my lectures I ask people, why are you Muslim? Some of you will say, because, well, my father was Muslim, right? My mother. My grandparents. Because I'm Bosnian. Because I'm Turk. Because I'm an Arab. But this is not the right approach to this issue. Because again, because I'm Greek, I should not be Muslim, right? With this logic. So the issue is about you finding your Lord and your Creator. No matter where you come from. And I want to start exactly with this. What does it mean us living in Europe, being Europeans and being Muslims? Many people in Europe say Islam came from outside. It came from the Arabs. It has nothing to do with Europe. But if I look around here, you look more European than I do. People always ask me, am I Syrian? Am I Egyptian? Am I Moroccan? But again, as I said, you guys look more European than I do. So what is the issue all about Europe and Islam don't fit together? What is this question all about? So, do you believe, and I'm asking you a question, do you believe Islam and Europe don't go together? Why? Islam came from Arabia. It came from the Middle East. So, why are you guys Muslim in the Balkans? Right. Islam came from the Middle East, right? Hello? Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, where did he come from? Was he Greek? Was he Swedish? No. He also came from the Middle East. And all the previous prophets. So what a stupid, stupid logic is this? To say Islam came from the Middle East so it doesn't belong to Europe. Hmm. Reason number two. Saying... The Arabs, our Prophet Muhammad was an Arab. So it's an Arab religion, right? Do you know that 12% of the Arabs are Christians? Do you know that most Arab immigrants in Australia and in America are actually Christians and not Muslims? So, the arguments, they don't have any basic, any logic. A third argument is, Islam came to Europe after Christianity. So, logically, Islam is a new religion 
Ne da se belong to Europe, right? Tako da logično je po toj tom razlišanju islam, budući da je došao kasnije u odnosu na hrišćanstvo u Evropu, znači da ne pripada Evropu, da je novi element. Now I have a question. When did the Swedish people become Christians? Jedno pitanje za vas. Kada su šveđani primjeli islam? Ko zna? Who knows? Šveđani, da. Gledam sam šveđani. In the year 1000 plus. In the year 1000 plus. In the year 1000 plus. The Hungarian people, when did they become Muslims? Kada su mađari primjeli islam? Around the same time. In the year 1000 plus. Prvnike isto vrijeme. Hiljadu i neka godina. In the year 1000, Europe, the Iberian Peninsula, Spain, and Portugal was the Umayyad Caliphate. Dakle, od oko hiljadu neke godine, Arabski polotok, Portugal i tako dalje, prepadali su Emelijskom Hilateku. For 300 years already, since 7-11, Until 1,000, the date we're talking about, 300 years, Islam was already part of the Iberian Peninsula. Part of Spain, Portugal, France. Dakle, od 700. do 1000. godine, dakle, 300 godina, Islam je bio sašteni dio Iberijskog poluotoka. To uključuje Francusku, France? France, yes. Portugal and Spain. I Španiju. So, third argument... No argument. No reason. Tako da treći argument koji koriste je zapravo i nije argument, nije logičan. So in many countries, Christianity came after Islam. In Europe. U mnogim zemljama Evrope, kršćanstvo je došlo posle Islama. And if we look at several routes how Islam entered Europe, we will see that Islam did not come to Europe to conquer or to eat the Europeans alive. Ako pogledamo kako je Islam došao u neke zemlje Evrope, vidjet ćemo da Islam nije došao da bukvalno proguta te zemlje Evrope. It came for another reason. Došao je s drugim razlogom. 7-11, the very first, the very first person, 7-11. godine, arrived in Gibraltar. 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 Gibraltar, what does it mean? Any idea? Gibraltar. To znači brdo Tariko. The hill of Tarik, the mountain of Tarik. Look here. Look this one here. That's the hill. That's Gibraltar. That's a rock. So Tarik, Tarik bin Ziyad was who? Tarik bin Ziyad. Who was Tarik bin Ziyad? Where was he from? He was an Arab. Ah, he was not an Arab. <laughs> Aha, he was a Berber. What is a Berber? From Morocco. From North Africa. He is South Africa, Southern Africa. Okay, Morocco didn't exist that time. So yeah. North Africa. So he came from North Africa, and he was not an Arab. With him came a lot of a big army of other Berbers and Arabs together. And they didn't come to Europe to put the flag of Arabia or the flag of the Berbers. The flag came and said La ilaha illallah Muhammad And they didn't come to conquer Europe because that time, that part of the world there was nothing. There was forest. Civilization, yok, as the Turks would say. Civilization was in two parts of the world that time. In the Muslim world and the Byzantines. So these were the two civilizations in Europe and the surrounding. Not Spain, not Portugal, not France, not Britain, not Germany, not Switzerland. They didn't exist at all. So now, why did they come to Europe? Because they had a deal. There was an agreement between the Muslims in North Africa And the prince in Ceuta, which is a small enclave, 
a small part in the north of Morocco. Što je mali, što zapravo je mali dio na na jugu Maroka. Which still nowadays is Spanish. A koji danas pripada Španiji. So it was a Spanish prince who wanted Spain for himself. He wanted to become the king of Spain. And he went into a deal together with Musa ibn Usair, who was the Sultan of North Africa. Ibn Usair. So he said to him, I give you Africa, Ceuta, and you give me Spain. That was a deal. But when the Muslims arrived in Spain, the people in the Iberian Peninsula, in Spain and in Portugal, they saw that the Muslims were just and fair towards them. Fair. Just and fair. So many of them accepted the faith. Many of them became Muslims. So it became Dar al-Islam. So you cannot give Dar al-Islam to a non-Muslim. So the Muslims stayed in Al-Andalus. That's Al-Andalus. What does Al-Andalus mean? If you look at that, this is the Iberian Peninsula. Just a very small part in the north. This was Christian. Everything else was Muslim. And slowly, with the time, the year 1000, 1100, the Muslims went down. They were losing the Iberian Peninsula, the Muslims. Question is why? What was going on? A high civilization, such as the Muslim civilization, an entire peninsula which was ruled by the Goths, who was a Germanic tribe, and they were Christians. Okay. And why did they call the Muslims this piece of land Al-Andalus? Any idea? Any idea? Al-Andalus, Al-Vandalus, Al-Vandals. Have you ever heard of the people who were called Vandals? Before the Goths, there were other people there. There were also Germanic people. And they were the Vandals. So, for that reason, they just knew the Germanic people as being Vandals. So, so they called this place the place of the Vandals. So, in the year 1400, this is Al-Andalus. All this is gone. This Portugal, Spain, France, okay, and the Kingdom of Granada. That's Al-Andalus. The Muslims lost the entire peninsula. But between 711 and 1492, this is more than 700 years. There was a flourishing culture of Islam in the entire peninsula of Iberia. Until the very last time, 1492, that's when Granada fell, the last city. So between 711 and 1492, that part of Europe was a Muslim part of Europe. So, during that time, Eastern Europe, Northern Europe, Northwestern Europe were not even Christians yet. 
sjeverni dio Evrope uopće tada nije bio kršćanski. There was an Islamic civilization in this part of the world, which we call Europe nowadays. Dakle, u to doba postojala islamska civilizacija u dijelu koga mi danas zovemo Evropa. Which during that time brought the renaissance. Što je kasnije rezultiralo i donijelo renesansu. And until nowadays, you can see places such as Granada. Sve do sada možete vidjeti u Granadi mjesta. The Alhambra in Granada. Alhambru. Mosque in Granada. Poznatu džamiju. Bazar, pazar. Bazar in Granada. Pijecu. You know, the old Muslim area of Granada. Stari muslimanski dio Granade. Subhanallah. Until the day of today, Islam is still surviving in this part of the world. Do danas Islam je preživio i preživljava u ovom dijelu Evrope. So Al-Andalus, just a brief idea I want to give you. Samo kratka ideja misa o Andalusu. That is the rule of the Muslims in Al-Andalus between 711 and 1492. Dakle, muslimanska vlast, islamska vlast je trajala od 711 do 1492. godine. 7 to 800 years. Od između 700 do 800 godina. And during that time, Europe, the only city that could compete with Cordoba, the capital of the Muslims, was Constantinople. Jedini grad koji se mogao natjecati takmičiti sa Granadom bio je Konstantinopolis. Not Berlin. Ne Berlin. Not Zurich. Ne Zurich. Not London and not Paris. Ne London, ne ne Paris. So now again, Islam plays no role in Europe, and I know you don't believe that. Tako da pitanje se nameće da li eli znači to da Islam nema nikakvu ulogu u Evropi. But during that time of Al-Andalus, many countries, many territories were open towards Islam, not only Spain and Portugal. Za to vrijeme muslimanske vlasti u Španiji mnoge zemlje su bile otvorene prema prema islamu. In the south of France, this is French. U u južnom dijelu Francuske. In the south of France, there was once a colony of the Muslims that was called Fraxine. Fraxine. Fraxine, što je u tom dijelu u Francuske je postojala muslimanska kolonija koja se zvala Fraksinet. From here, the Muslims opened, and I'm using the verb open, like we do in Arabic, Fatha, they opened a country which nowadays many of you people are living there. Iz ovog dijela Francuske muslimani su osvojili jedan dio drugi Evrope u kojima mnogi među vama možda žive. Which country? Svisovno. Switzerland. Switzerland. The south of Switzerland, where people speak French and German and Italian. Sorry. That part was once a Muslim territory. For around a hundred years. In the 10th century. So now, Switzerland says we burn the minaret. We burn the niqab, we burn the burqa. Because they say we are Europeans. And we have nothing to do with Islam. Islam came later. In the 10th century, was there a Switzerland? Was there a Switzerland in the 10th century? Was there a Switzerland in the 10th century? No. Ne, nije. No. There was Islam in Switzerland without Switzerland existing. Islam je bio u Švajcarskoj prije nego što je Švajcarska postojala. There was Islam in France without France existing. Islam je bio u Francuskoj dok Francusko uopće nije postojala. There was Islam in Italy without Italy existing. Islam je postoji u Italiji kada je Italija uopće nije postojala. In the year 1000, the island of Sicily was an emirate. Sicilija je bila Emirat, odnosno jedan dio muslimanske vlasti. There are Emirates in Italy. The Emirates of Ancona, of Bari, Brindisi, Taranto. All these are cities in Italy. They were Emirates. Svi ti dijelovi u Italiji su zapravo bili dijelovi muslimanske vlasti. For 60, 70, 80, 100 years. 500, 600 godina. So all these countries All these territories nowadays, which are part of Europe, 
which have laws against our women wearing hijab, niqab, burqa, against Muslims building mosques and minarets. All these countries once had a close contact to the Muslims before they even existed as countries. Cijelo je zemlje koje danas zabranjuju niqab i minari i tako dalje su nekada u jednom trenutku povijesti imali jako blizak kontakt s islamom u momentu u stoljećima kada današnje ove države uopće nisu u njih postojali. That's Switzerland. Švajcarska. And that's Malta. Malta. Anybody who knows something about Malta? The island of Malta? Znamo neko nešto o Malti? What do the Maltese people speak? Kojim jezikom ljudi u Malti govore? I think English. Two languages official. The one is English and the other one is? Jedan zvanični jezik je engleski, a drugi... Maltese. What is Maltese? Maltanski, kako da ga nazvam. 70% Arabic. 70. 70. 70% na tog jezika je zapravo iz arabskog. The Maltese language is nothing else but an Arabic dialect such as the Algerian dialect, the Tunisian dialect. Jezik, odnosno jezik Malte nije ništa drugo do samo jedan dialekt arabskog jezika kao što postoji arabski dialekt u Alžiru, Maroku i drugim arabskim zemljama. And it's part of the European Union. A ova zemlja je dio, ili zapravo dio Europske unije. So that means we have Europeans who speak Arabic. Dakle, imamo evropljani koji govori arabski. So now again, Look at all these facts, and nobody tells you that at school, right? Anybody told you that at school? Dr. Pogled, sve ove činjenice koje smo iznijeli, nikom ne kaže da je to sve u redu. What's going on? Šta se dešava? Why? Zašto? Why don't we know these things? Zašto? I didn't know that. Ne znam ove stvari, ja lično nisam, također znam. I went to school in Germany. Išao sam u školu u Njemačkoj. I finished my A-levels. Završio sam master doktorski. No, 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 A-levels, meaning high school. High school, I finished my high school, and then I went to university. And then in the university, I went to the library and I was spending nights, I was sleeping in the libraries and I started reading. And I started reading about Muslim civilization in Europe. And I was thinking, what's going on? Why? Why have they never told us these things? And this is just one route. Al-Andalus is just the beginning of Islam in Europe. A Španija, odnosno Andalus je samo jedan korijen, samo početak dolazka Islama u Evropu. The second route is a very important one for the Balkans. Drugi korijen je... Who are the next people? The next Muslims. Drugi korijen dolazka Islama u Evropu je vezan za Balkan. What happens after Al-Andalus? Otomans. The Otomans. Where do they come from? Otomani. Osmane dolaze, ovdje te su došli? From Central Asia. Dolaze iz Centralne Azije. So, Al-Andalus, the Muslims came from North Africa. Dakle, Osmane u Španiju su došli iz, sa sjevera Afrike. And the Ottomans came from Central Asia. A Ottomani, odnosno Osmane, iz Centralne Azije. So now, we think that you are Muslims because the Ottomans came here, right? Zato, vi ste dakle Muslimani jer su ovdje Ottomani, Osmane je došli. That's half the truth. Because before the Ottomans, there were Muslims in these areas, in this territory. For example, if you go to Kosovo, there is a mosque that was developed in the 13th century, before the Ottomans came. There is a ruin in North Macedonia. Postoji ostaci, dakle, u... A broken mosque, a ruin. Dakle, ostaci, onako, porušene džamije u sjeveru Makedonije. From the 9th century, 9th century. Iz 9. stoljeća. No Ottomans were here at that time. Tada Osmanlije nisu bile... So now when we say, it's the Ottomans' fault who brought Islam to you and you became Muslim forcefully, as the Serbs say, many other people say. Tako da, jesu li Osmanlije... Silom donijeli ovdje islam kao što... There is something not right there. ...ovaj, nacionalisti iz Srbije kažu. Right. So, 
The same in Greece, you know, my home country. They say. In my home country, they say always the Muslims who are in Greece, they were forced to become Muslim. Obično kažu da Muslimani koji žive u Grčkoj, oni su natjerani da prime Islam. Well, nobody forced me. Next to this one, there were so many pashas. Osim toga bilo je jako puno paša. Who were either Bosniaks, who were Albanians, who were Greeks, who were many different nationalities. Bili su bili iz drugih država. And they were ruling the Ottoman Empire together with the Ottomans. I oni su zajedno sa Osmanlijama upravljali i vodili Osmansku državu. They were all Ottoman people. Svi su oni bili Osmanlije. It was a multicultural empire. To je bila multikulturalna imperija. Over three continents: Europe, koja se prostirala na tri kontinenta, Asia and Africa. U Evropi, Aziji i Africi. And these people who we call Turks nowadays, it's a wrong name. Ljudi o kojima govorimo koje danas zovemo Turcima. They are people from Central Asia. They came from this area here. To su ljudi koji su došli iz centralne Azije. Massive area. Ogromna je na teritoriji, ogroman prostor. Okay. Turkic people, not Turkish, Turkic. Turkic, narod koji se zove Turkic, ne Turci, nego Turkic. So what does it mean? What is the difference? A Turk exists since 1923. Say again this, please. A Turk exists since 1923. 1923, the Republic of Turkey, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. 1923. Od 1923. godine postoji Turska kao država. Before there were no Turks. There was nothing like a Turk. There were Turkic people, yes, people who came from a certain area. So it is wrong to say that it was the Turks who came here. No, because they were all together in it. And they created the Ottoman Empire. As you can see, the Balkans, you can see going into Turkey, the Middle East, Egypt, North Africa. Okay. So, an empire of three big continents. Dakle, imperija koja se prostirala na tri kontinenta. As we know now, there's the Balkan Peninsula, right? We have places such as Bulgaria, Serbia, of course, Kosovo, North Macedonia, Albania, Montenegro, and so on and so on. These places we know. These are new places now after the breakup of Yugoslavia. Ova mjesta znamo i nakon koje su nakon rastave Yugoslavije. And the third route that I would like to introduce to you. How Islam came to Europe. We have Southern Europe, we have Southeastern Europe, and now Eastern and Northern Europe. Dakle, sada imamo Eastern and Northern. Imamo, dakle, istočni i istočno sjeverni dio Evrope. How did Islam come to Eastern Europe? Kako Islam došao u istočnu Evropu? And to Northern Europe. Any idea? Do sjeverne Evrope. Zna li neko? Who were the Muslims who came there? Ko su bili muslimani koji su došli na ta mjesta? Those people from Andalus. Some, in the, before, you're right, some. But the big part, it was the Tatars. Dakle, većina muslimana koji su došli na ove dijelove Evrope su Tatari. And the Tatars were originally people who actually came from Asia again, like the Turkic people. U suštini ljudi koji dolaze iz Azije. And they have nowadays in Russia the Republic of Tatarstan and Bashkortostan. And Bashkortostan. Two republics. I drugu koja se zove where the Tatar people live as a majority. Gde kao većina Tatari žive. They had to flee Euro Asia to come to Europe. Why? Because of the Mongols. You all know Genghis Khan, right? Can, can you repeat this again, please? The Tatars had to flee Asia to come uh -huh. to Europe. Oni su pobegli, Tatari su pobegli iz Azije zbog Mongola i došli u Evropu bježeći od Mongola. Because of the Mongols. And the Mongols, Genghis Khan, you know. A Mongoli su bili, čuli ste za Genghis Khana. Was he a Muslim? Je li on bio musliman? You know, I know many Turkish people who call their, ch their children, their sons, Genghis. Znam dosta Turaka koji svojoj djeci daju imena kao Genghis, po Genghis Khan. 
First he wasn't Muslim, then he embraced all my brothers. He didn't. Never. No, 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 no. Much later. His, grand, his grandchildren accepted, not himself. So later the Mongols indeed accepted the, the Islam. And what happened? Most of the places where the Mongols were became Muslim places, such as Iran. The whole Caucasus, Chechnya, and many other places in southern Russia into Central Asia, all Muslim areas. You know, Allah says in the Quran, and I'm paraphrasing now, <coughs> we plan, we plan, but Allah is the best in planning. SubhanAllah. So out of the enemies of Islam, they became supporters of Islam, and they took Islam into India. Last but not least, the Tatars settled also in Eastern Europe in areas such as Poland and Lithuania. And there are 12 villages in Poland nowadays, entirely Muslim Tatar villages. And some of them went in the beginning of the 20th century to Finland. In Finland, there are nowadays Tatar people who are Finnish people. And they, have been and they have been living in this country for more than 100, 150 years. More than 100. More than 100 years. So, coming to the point that I wanted to make. We, as Muslims in Europe, play an important role but we need to understand our history first of all. We need to understand who our ancestors were here. What the importance of us Muslims being in Europe is and still was and will be, inshallah. And this we can just do if we know our history. Drugu temu, preposlam slično, ali iz drugog kuga će govoriti o izazovima muslimana koji žive u Evropi. Pa ste svi pozvali, gujno dođete, da se Allah nagradi svakim dobrom. U sedam najveće.